Today, a man is rich and powerful, and tomorrow he is broke and pitiful. Today, a man dresses good and all's well, but tomorrow he begs for food and lives like hell. Today, a man is empty and down to nothing, but tomorrow he is wealthy and has everything. Today, a man is in chains, and tomorrow he is free. Today a man like a feeble eaglet flops his wings only within the nest of misery and neglect. But tomorrow he is like the peregrine falcon gliding majestically through diverse spectrums of power and stardom. So I ask, how do you judge a man? I'll tell you. You judge a man not by what he drives, but by what drives him. Not by what edifice in which he lives, but by what purpose he breathes. You judge a man by what he has believed in, by the content of his character, by the power that's at work in him. You judge a man not by the years of his age, but by the soundness of his mind, by the audacity of his courage, his will to do what others are too afraid to do, by his determination to succeed even when all is black and blue. Don't judge a man by his past, for the past is past. Don't even judge a man by his present, for even the present won't last. It is subject to change and will soon be past as well. Oftentimes, the present is a deceptive reflection of the future, a false revelation of our tomorrow. So judge no man by where he has been or is, for where he is going you don't know. Never judge a man by his vain wishes or another by the condition in which he languishes, but by their deep belief and faith in the glorious possibilities they can create, because even a faith so little can make a mountain seem so brittle. Judge no man by the size of their eyes, but by the range of their sight. Judge no man by the largeness of their chest, but by the largeness of their hearts, for it takes not a large chest, but a large heart to lift a spirit. Judge no man by the consequences of their actions, but by the genuineness of their intentions. We all make mistakes, so judge no man by what he has done, but by what he can become. Judge a man by his deeds, only if they are a flawless depiction of who he ultimately is. But how can we tell a man's ultimate? By his past or immediate? We are what we repeatedly do only in the eyes of mere mortals. For in the eyes of he who most matters, the wielder of time, we are what he says we are, and for me, that's fine. So if you must judge, let these be your standards of judgment for all. But if these standards seem too hard and tall, better judge no man at all.